Welcome to Washoe County Library's Wild Wednesdays, everyone. So glad you're here with us. And with Conver Conservation Ambassadors Wild Things, um, this is Gabe. He's the special guest and his host. Just kidding. <laughs> Who do you have, Gabe? Uh, this is an amazing creature. His name is Steve. And Steve is an Argus monitor, one of the largest lizards on the planet. He's in the same family as the Komodo dragon that we've heard so much about. And this guy here, he looks like a great big lizard, but he's a baby. This is just a youngster. He's gonna grow to be six feet long and maybe 70 pounds. So he gets to be very large. Did you see when he threw out his tongue? Let's see if I did again. He's really, oh, he's good. Do you guys know he's, he's smelling with that tongue? He, well, there we go. He sticks that long fork tongue out. He grabs a little piece of air. And just like his snake cousins, he can process the air and he can tell what's happening in the world around him. Now, the Argus monitor, one of the coolest lizards, uh, well, he's cool for many, many reasons, but he lives in the grasslands of Australia. And one of the neatest things that he does, he does something called tripoding. He'll stand up on his back legs and kind of propping himself up with his tail. And he'll stand up like this and look, he looks like, he looks like a T-Rex and he looks out over the tall grasses. It's so cool. It's how he sees what's happening in the world around him. Maybe, maybe to see if there's some, something he might consider prey, like, oh, like a small mammal or some eggs or, or a ground bird, ground nesting bird. Or um, maybe he's watching for predation, animals that might want to um, go after him. So he has to be aware. But they, even when they're large, they stand up in this, it, it's the only lizard um, in this family, in the monitor family, that does this, that does the tripoding. He's pretty cool. Now, he should be in Australia. This guy actually was hatched in the wild in Australia, and somebody tried to sneak him back in the United States. And they got caught. He was taken away by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and sent to us. And what an amazing creature. You know what makes this story really sad is, one, they're bred here in captivity. A lot of the reptile breeders breed Argus monitors, so if somebody wanted one, they they could have bought one that was bred in captivity. And two, these guys are disappearing in Australia. They're having a hard time surviving in, the, in, in their wild. And the main reason they're having a hard time surviving in the wild is because they eat frogs and toads. And you're saying, well, what's the problem there? Well, the problem is there was a toad that was introduced to Australia called the cane toad that is, that is poisonous. And if he eats a cane toad, he gets very, very sick. And so, um, it's affecting their wild population. I think he's totally cool. And I can't, I can't wait till he's 60 or 70 pounds. He's going to be really neat to share. He's going to be a little hard to uh, bring to your schools and outreaches, though. He'll be a little bit more difficult, but he's, he actually has a very good nature. He's not a nibbler, which makes him very, a lot of fun to, to handle. Um, some of the monitors can tend to be a little bit nibbly, but this guy is not. You see his ears? See that no. hole behind his eye? You can oh, see yeah. his eardrum. You can see that's his tympanic membrane right there. And he can actually hear very, very well um, with just that the, the kind of external eardrum. You hear him hissing? I do. He doesn't understand what the iPhone is right there in front of him. He's, what is that thing? And bright yellow when he's first hatched, just a brilliant, almost a fluorescent color. And as he gets older, he'll turn to gray like, like we all do. He'll kind of gray out a little bit. But Good to know we're not the only species, right? Exactly, exactly. If you're just joining us, welcome to Washoe County Library's Wild Wednesdays with Conservation Ambassadors Wild Things. This is our host, Gabe, who's here with Hello. Steve, an Argus monitor. Gabe, can you tell us a little bit about your organization? Sure. Wild Things, or Conservation Ambassadors, is we're a nonprofit wildlife rescue center. We're a place where animals that have been injured and can't be released back out in the wild, those animals are sometimes sent. Or other times, other times we have this this problem with people trying to make wild animals into pets. Never works, and it's also against the law. Those animals, they're taken away and sent to us as well. What we do is we take these animals in, we work with them, and the animals we can, we train to travel, to go to schools, clubs, camps. Our, my favorite programs are the library programs, um, and give us a chance to share and talk about some of these amazing creatures and kind of teaching about how we can protect them in their natural habitat out there in the wild where they, where they truly belong. For instance, this guy here, he's, he's a long way from Australia, where he should be. But at, and I wish he could go back. It's just not in the cards for him. But at least he's doing something for his species. 
He's out there talking about the Argus monitor. So maybe somebody you know, would be more, less inclined to, to do it. That person did to him. So that's, that's their awesome. role. And that's, that's actually my favorite thing is to visit the school groups and the libraries. And I, I love being able to share animals up close and in real life. Um, obviously right now we, we can't do that. So we're doing the next best thing with sure Wild Wednesdays with the Washington County Library. It's kind of neat. Um, and if you have any questions as you're joining us, please put them in the chat so Gabe can answer your questions. Um, I had a question, but now I totally slipped my mind, which I should have typed it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so he'll get to be about six feet long. Mm -hmm. He'll get to be very large. They're, they're, um, a lot of that length is tail. I don't know if you can see how long that tail is. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's a very well-muscled tail. It's also prehensile. He can grab on the tree branches and keep his balance up in the trees. As a young shirt, he'll climb. When he gets to be older, he spends more time on the, on the ground. But you know, where he lives, there aren't a lot of trees. It's not like a rainforest. It's more of a dry, arid grassland in Australia. And actually, both the animals we have today for Wild Wednesday are from Australia, from the same grassland area. So, I am looking forward cool. to the other one as well. I did think of my question and it was when he hisses, is that the same kind of defense mechanism as a cat or that type of animal? Yeah, it's similar, yes. He's, he's singing something in front of him and he's making a little sound and maybe that object will be aware that he's there and maybe would leave him alone. So yes, he's letting us know that he's present and he's aware. He sees exceptionally well. He has great vision. And that helps him when he's out there looking at the top of the, top of the grass. Do you see the little ridges above his eyes? Do you see those? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are almost like sun visors. It's like it blocks the glare of the sun from getting to his eyes. Well, Steve is very aware of what's going on right now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. His skin, people used to make, you know, wallets and things out of the skin. I'm glad they don't do it any longer. It's really, it's lost its allure. And in Australia, uh, as, a, as a country, Australia has done a fantastic job protecting their wildlife. All the animals are protected, so these, these guys aren't being taken for their skin. That's great, too. It looks better on him anyways. And will he be able to go back into the wild? or is No, he... I wish he could. Just the logistics of taking the animal and sending it back with the health uh, you know, considerations, you know, disease from one area to the next, getting him into the proper area. Um, and, and getting you know, cooperation between governments, really, to be able to do that, it just doesn't happen. Unless it's a highly, highly endangered animal, like say the red panda from China, there really is no active reintroduction of the animals. Um, that's why he was sent to us by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. There's a question that just came in. They want to know how fast he is. <laughs> Super fast. He can outrun me. No problem. That's I know it's no great feat. That's uh, just get there before you do, Morgan. But okay. he 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 can outrun me. That like, this guy is super quick. And when they get to be adults, they're equally fast. Oops, you know, over there. He's designed for speed. And look, he's kind of built like a slender race car there, ready to go. His color is beautiful, isn't it? He is absolutely beautiful. And um. There's a question about your animals that you have. Do you breed them at all or? No, if okay. an animal should be bred, meaning it should be part of a breeding project, then it goes to a place that is doing the breeding. Being a rescue center, we don't want to engage in more animals in captivity. That's not in our charter. There's some great wildlife breeding facilities, whether it's endangered cats or, or primates or whatnot. That's not our role. Our role is, is housing animals that have nowhere else to go. So we don't do any breeding here. He does have a very dinosaur look to him. He does. So if you want to find out more about Argus monitors or other animals of Australia, which we're going to see another one here soon, make sure you visit our website, washoconeylibrary.us. We have lots of resources for you. We can't always have Gabe as our expert, although we really do love having you here. So well, thank you. you. I certainly enjoy it too. So should I put this guy down? Yeah, somebody just made a comment how cute he looks like his hands are folded over. He looks very genteel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He, is, he does. Claws. You see those claws? Three main things. He uses those for climbing trees. He uses them for protection. And he uses them for opening up birds' nests. 
ground nesting birds will usually cover their eggs in kind of a, a pile of twigs and branches, you can rip into those with those big sharp claws. And the tail, like I said, it's prehensile. It's also a great tool for swimming and it's a whip. Another creature gets too close, they whip that tail. It's a powerful defense, a very, very good way of protecting themselves. Steve is All right. gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna put him back. All right. Oh wait, let me just ask one more question. They wanna know, is can, what does he eat? He's a carnivore. This guy eats meat. So he'll eat, um, he'll eat mice, he'll eat rats, he'll take rabbits, he'll take eggs, some of his favorite food. But I think his preferred diet are frogs and toads. That's a major part of his diet. And is he harmful to people? So No, he has a good bite. But um, if you were to see an Argus Martin in the wild, what a cool experience, and the thing would go running away as fast as it could. Even the largest of the Argus, Argus monitors, they just want to be left alone. There's no catching him, because we know how fast he is. No catching him, that's right. Awesome, thank you so much for answering those questions. Sure, all right. You already said goodbye, did you hear it? Hi, Steve. All right. Do you know why his name's Steve, Morgan? That's because of Steve Irwin. All, all I was gonna oh, make a great. crikey joke, but I won't. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Steve Irwin, who's no longer with us, um, for any of you kids out there wanting to know more about him, we've got some great biographies, but uh, what a what a truly same kind of thing that you're doing, you know, informational, educational. Outreach. He brought up a lot, of, a lot of excitement and a lot of energy towards learning about wild creatures, you know, on a global scale. Yeah. So, all right, you ready for a bird? I am. And this bird, this bird is, uh, it's one of my favorites, has the coolest call, I think, of any bird. And there are some really cool calls out there. This guy is, he, he, I'm going to bring him out. And he's going to look like a small, nondescript bird. But just wait until you hear his song. Okay? So here we go. Bring him out. Oh, the anticipation is building. <gasps> Who is this? This is Kono. <laughs> is that the coolest sound? That is so beautiful. What a is beautiful song. <laughs> In charge of this program. A lot of he's a favorite pop star over here on Facebook Live. Okay, is that great? It's so awesome. It this really is. is. The blue tinged kookaburra, sometimes called the common kookaburra from Australia. Now, turn over here. All right, one more. First, we worry about whether or not he's going to call for us, and then he won't stop. This guy here, this is the coolest bird. Now, that sound you heard, that's not amplified. That's just his call. It's about the, it's really loud. And, but imagine, he doesn't live by himself. This is a bird that lives in a flock. There'll be 30 people there, all in one eucalyptus, one gum tree, all making that amazing sound. So it sounds a little bit more like this. Are you ready, Colonel? Let's go together. Ready? One, two, three. And always with the laughter at the end. That's why they call the laughing people there. No, hold on. He looks small. He looks cute. But this. This is a predator. He is a hunter. He sits on the, the branches of the eucalyptus tree. And he'll watch the grasslands 
and he'll watch for a mouse or a small lizard or a snake, and he'll come down, he'll grab it with that big beak. Somebody will just call it a bill, but he'll grab it onto it with that big beak, and he'll grab it on his prey, and he'll hold it until it is deceased, and then he'll swallow it down completely whole. This guy can swallow a snake that's even longer than his body, and he'll swallow it down. Pretty cool. Now, he'll swallow it down, and a few hours later, he'll cough up all that fur and bones and teeth, brings it back out of his beak. Um, it's called a pellet, kind of a neat way of eating. Now, just like Archimedes last week. Exactly, just like the like the raptors, like the, the owls and the hawks and the eagles. Now, this guy I talked about his beak. He has what's called a malocclusion. His beak doesn't line up just perfectly. And so every now and then we have to trim that beak. It just kind of goes past it. It's like trimming your fingernails. That's about it. Now, was purchased by a lady in Granite Bay, California, which is kind of a wealthy area, and she bought a kookaburra. And surprisingly enough, it's not against the law to do this. And this lady paid a lot of money to get this bird and build a big aviary for him. And every morning at 5.30 in the morning, do you know what he would do? Sing. This. <laughs> what do you think the neighbors thought? The neighbors, they didn't think it was so cool at all. And this guy, he was sent to us, and I love him. He's one of the Australian animals that we get to talk about. I think that it's fascinating. Have you heard the kid's song? I have heard it. I'm not going to sing it, though. I'll let Kono take over the show. I'm not going to do that. Okay, watch this. Watch his head. Watch it. You see that shift? See how his body shifts and his head stays still? Can you see that, Morgan? Yes, he is incredible. You are getting, he's gotten a lot of love off of Facebook and Zoom here. Yeah, has he? That's cool. Love his song. Look and I love the laughing at the end too. Kind of makes know. you giggle. He's the only one that laughs at my jokes. That, um, th 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 I was going to show you and see how his head is kind of, it's almost on a gyroscope. I don't right. See it any longer. But it's, it, when he's flying, his body might be shifting in the wind. But his eyes stay focused on his prize. It's called fixing. His eyes are tied into whatever he's going after. Really cool. Now, there are 17 different species of kookaburra. Some larger, one that's a little bit smaller. This is one of the most common of the kookaburra in Australia. And um, 17 different types, and each species has its own call, has its own unique way of kind of finishing the song. He, he was given what he's laughs. That's the complete song. Um, sometimes he'll kind of start it off and abandon the song mid, you know, stanza. But that was a complete song as he's, as he's going. Um, I hope one day to travel to Australia to see a, a flock or hear a flock making that call in the wild. I think that'd just be amazing. Can you imagine so, that sound? He has a cousin that lives right here in North America, right here in California and Nevada. It's called the Kingfisher. We have, he is a cousin of the Kingfisher. He's in the kingfisher family, and if you look at his head and his large beaker bill, he does look like a kingfisher. Kingfishers eat frogs and polywogs and fish. This guy, not so good on the fish. He's, um, he lives with really, really dry, not a lot of water, so fish don't make up a major part of his diet. And you mm -hmm. mentioned that he, so he is a male, somebody asked, um, mm -hmm. but a blue, correct me. Blue tinged. So does he have blue on him? You see the blue right there on his wing? Yes, I guess I just needed to look a little closer. Yeah, right there on his wing. And when he's in the sun, it's beautiful. Oh, look at his face. Oh, he's now, so Now, he's molting right now. He's lost all of his tail feathers. Look at that. See that little tiny one sticking out? Yeah. Those will be about three and a half or four inches long in a, in a couple of weeks here. It's, it's the time of the year where it's really, really hot. And he molts, he changes out his under plumage and some of the big flight feathers, and he grows all new plumage. Pretty neat. And how often does he do that? Annually, once a year. Oh. Oh, he's gonna poop too. Oh. It wouldn't be oh. a complete show without that. So well, exactly, exactly. We haven't done our job unless something makes a mess. I think they're fantastic birds. Um, the uh, it's an animal that just the song is used a lot. Um, for rainforest movies or maybe Tarzan movies. They always, they hear that, that sound, they use it in the background as kind of a jungle sound. It doesn't make any sense because this guy doesn't live in a jungle. He lives nowhere near a jungle. He lives in a dry grassland area. 
but we always use that sound. And next time you watch a Tarzan movie or a, a jungle theme movie, listen for it in the background if you're the Puka Burrow. And not to fib, I did do a little homework before we came, uh, before oh, Kono cool. came. Um, I did read that. He was also in, the sound is also in The Wizard of Oz, and it's the dolphin sound used in the movie Flipper. Oh my gosh, that's very wild. I didn't know that. There you that's go, cool. something else, yeah. Learned yeah, it through the is, library. There you go, guys. Um, that is, somebody's asking, do, does he span his wings at all, or are they? Yeah, are, you want to see? They would like go. to see. He always gets the last word. Oh. You like, see how his eyes are kind of camouflaged? They're placed right on the dark strip. Yeah. All the cucumber have a, a dark band right above their eyes. It kind of camouflages their eye from, from animals that might want to prey upon them. It, it surprisingly, even though he has this blue in his plumage, he's very well camouflaged. You put him in a gum tree or you flip this tree, he blends re in really, really well. It does look like that. We have a question. What makes him sing the song? Well, it's, it, there's a couple of reasons. One is marking territory, calling to other kookaburra and saying, hey, this is my spot. Another is just a sense of community, calling with the other birds, screaming in the morning and in the evening, making that song, letting them know where they are, all are, kind of marking their space. It's really cool. It's not a sound that he does like when he's aggressive or anything like that. It's when he's comfortable and when he's letting other creatures know that he's around. You see when, he's, when he does it, he's, uh, my favorite part is he throws his head back and just goes full gusto. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and nothing halfway. They live in flocks. Do they recognize each other from their song? Yes, yes. The song is really an indicator on, on calling in their group, their distinct group. That was a good question. That came from one of our panelists today. Very nice. Again, if you guys have any questions, please put them in the chat while we have Gabe here to answer questions about Kono. And we will have two more of our Wild Wednesdays through the end of July as part of our summer reading adventure. Thanks to Washoe, Friends of Washoe County Library for um, helping us do this. It's fantastic and one of my favorite programs. Mm -hmm. And Kono, it does not disappoint. I think he's mm -hmm. my favorite song. Uh, he's just fantastic, isn't he? You know, he, he's not very big. He weighs less than half a pound. Uh, this is a lot of feathers in here. Check that out. Uh, this is what he likes. He likes you know, actually, when they tickle him right there. Oh, there we go. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's just... Almost like your dog rolling over to get the belly. Exactly. Oh, 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 oh. Except my dog doesn't laugh. But, um, <laughs> <True>. <laughs> what yeah. is best ability somebody wants to know? His best ability is, well, in terms of his senses, he has incredible vision. He has really good vision. I think that's what they're asking. His best yes, ability. I, I'm, I'm guessing what he's best at. I would assume hunting. You talked about that a little bit, too. Yeah, and singing, I guess we throw that in there. He's, Absolutely. He's I a good singer. Gold that's, star for that. Aren't they, you know, it's, it's amazing the birds uh, in the world, the, the different songs and, and, the, and the roles each of those songs play, whether it's in attracting a mate or uh, marking territory to other flocks or whatnot. Truly fascinating. Somebody's asking about his talons. I don't know if we can get a closer look at those. They're sure. just curious. Not very long, are they? No, not very big from what you would uh -huh. maybe expect. And not sharp. He doesn't do anything with those other than perch. They're just for grabbing on the branches. Hmm. And how long does a kookaburra live? About 15 to 18 years. That's a captive lifespan. So as some birds live a long, long, long time, kookaburra is not one of them. Um, about 15 to 18 years is, is kind of the, the range. And do you clip he his eats, beak, Gabe? Or we does somebody do. else? Mm -hmm. Well, with this guy, I'll do it. It's a good question because some of our other birds that we need to do grooming on, I don't do it because they tend to hold a grudge. This guy here, he doesn't 
doesn't seem to mind. He actually just lets us do it, hold his beak real gently, and we can kind of trim it down with our Dremel tool, and so he doesn't get upset by it. So I, I end up doing it, and I make it look really nice. It's like getting a manicure, getting his, um, his beak done. It looks it's all nice, nice and to see. I'm glad you left it though, so that we could see the way that it grows like that. Well, yeah, that's, he probably would not survive in the wild because of that beak, because it would just continue to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually he wouldn't be able to feed himself. Um, and then it, just a supposition, even, you know, for, it might be able to break it off or something, but that usually when the beak doesn't line up perfectly, it doesn't wear properly. That's a problem for the animal, but he doesn't have that problem because he lives with us and he gets food brought to him. And, um, and speaking of food, two or three mice every single day. Oh. This guy eats a lot for a little bird, for less than a pound, two or three mice every single day. Pretty impressive. They'll also eat worms. Someone said it's very cool the way his throat expanded. And I think we saw that when he was calling. Does he do that just to make the call or? Yeah, he does it to throw his air, to push his air. So. Do you want to see it one more time? I think, I think we all do. Do you think you could get him to do it, Morgan? I don't know the trick. I know there's a trick. Just, that, just roll your, and make a high-pitched noise and then roll your R like, it, like you would in Spanish. You, yeah. you're, have you talked to my children? Is that a joke? Because yeah, I can't roll my R. I physically can't. <laughs> one shot. Here we go. I can't make it. <laughs> Is that what you said? <laughs> okay, I, I can't roll my R's. Okay, it was a good effort though. Thank you for trying. Here we go. All good. Here we go. laughing at the fact that you can't roll your arms. I, well, was, I'm sure there's a lot of us out there doing that. That's um, right. I, just again, <laughs> um, this is Gabe with what, con Conservation Ambassadors Wild Things, because somebody is asking a question of how many pets you have, but these aren't pets. That's or right. Maybe have, they are asking how many pets you have. We assume you might well, have a dog. I have two. I have a cat. His name is Bear, and he kind of runs the house. And then I have a great big yellow dog named Mordecai. And Morty or Mordecai, he's, um, he's the love of my life. He's great. Nice. Um, the, somebody said that we talked about the sounds in the movies. They always thought it was multiple animals making that sound and not just one. So Yeah. It, oh, it's, it's amazing. Quite a star. But just imagine if there are multiple ones making that sound, what sound that must be, how amazing that must be. Good thing the lady that bought him didn't buy more than one. Yeah, good thing. You know, it's, it's, it's a, if they were asking about how many pets, the animals that I work with are not pets. I love them and I love sharing them and talking about them. But I think a pet you want to be with, for me, these guys, I'd rather they were somewhere else. I'd rather they were back in the wild. I'd rather they live in life free. Huh. Gabe, he is absolutely beautiful. I am yeah. so excited that I got to be here for him today. I Very love his cool. call. We and all have getting comments that they also love how he responds to you because I can't roll my R's, but now everybody knows next time he's around in our <laughs> library systems that we can, we can help him sing. That's right. That's right. Exactly. And, and, and I love how he responds to me too. I'm a member of this block. So it's That's I think okay. pretty cool. Well, thank Alrighty. you so much for a great wild Wednesday again with conservation ambassadors, wild things. If you haven't signed up, you still can for our summer reading adventure. You can go to washercountylibrary.us to find more information there or to look up some more Australian animals um, in addition to what you've learned today. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Gabe. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming and showing up. See you next Wednesday. See you next Wednesday.